welcome back. And we're moving into our second segment for today, where we are joined by representatives of Blue Ventures. They are an organization, an NGO, uh, in Sartaneja. So you're a far way away. Yes. And we have with us uh, Cecilia Guerrero, who is the Community Program Coordinator for Blue Ventures. And we have Tyrell Reyes, who's the Science Coordinator. Good morning and Good welcome. Morning. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us. <laughs> and we got to display the shirts a bit. Yes. Eat that lion. The <laughs> Fui Island, Island vibe. vibe. Yeah. Cecilia and Tara, we have been talking about lionfish for quite some time. And obviously, you have uh, continued the effort in educating people as to why it's important that we eat this fish. So first of all, let's just take a step back as to why uh, or how long we have been battling the problem of an increasing population of lionfish. All right, so um, lionfish, as we know right now, invasive species. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And definitely, like usually, many invasive species cause harm to the environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the lionfish um, originally comes from the Indo-Pacific Ocean, mm -hmm. so that the next side of the world. Yeah. But it was believed that in the 80s, um, like from aquarium owners, lionfish was actually released off the coast from Florida. And then mm -hmm. over time, this fish just started to increase, increase, and just invade the entire Gulf of Mexico, mm -hmm. the Caribbean, and now they got record all the way down South America, like in the waters in front of Brazil. Wow. Mm. So um, one of the reasons why this, um, this species is, is a perfect invader is that um, one of the, the main causes is that it doesn't have no natural predator in this invaded area. What? So they can't control the uh, population out there. Yeah. So once there is a high amount of lionfish, uh, the population in this in this case, there is a higher effect on predation on our native species. Mm -hmm. So, and that's very um, important, right? Because mm -hmm. our native species include very important commercial species. We have snappers, we have groupers, mm -hmm. and these are very important for the fishery, especially here in Belize, right? Yes. And now, um, here in Belize, the first record of lionfish was um, in Ternef Island, and I believe that was in the 2009. Mm -hmm. And from there on, um, people have been, and um, fishermen and other tour operators have seen lionfish throughout the entire waters of Belize. Mm -hmm. And population has been quite high. Um, but right now, we have constant, like a constant remove, but removal of lionfish, right? But it's not so high enough to actually reduce the amount of lionfish. Yeah. Uh, right now, uh, based on a study that was done in 2015, um, average uh, population of uh, landfish or density is around 10 individuals per one hectare. It's quite low compared to other uh, countries. Other so, places yeah, are really For example, the Bahamas, I mean, yeah. landfish actually exceed all the way to 100, all the way to 600 individuals mm -hmm. per hectare. So that's super high. And um, the important thing is that um, landfish has already established here in Belize. Mm -hmm. We cannot completely remove landfish. Okay, yeah. So we just have to cope with it. So mm -hmm. Based on research, research shows that actually there's not a need to actually remove all the lionfish, but just to maintain the to lionfish the to a target uh -huh. level, yeah. yeah. Okay. So it won't um, actually affect the reefs. Yeah. Now, let me, let me just ask a, a couple of questions. Uh, one, what would have been the natural predator for a lionfish in the part of the world where it originated? All right, so um, yeah, um, in the Indian, um, in the Pacific Ocean, then um, we have some groupers, major groupers actually feeds on lionfish mm -hmm. okay. uh, within others um, predators, right? Mm -hmm. But these predator has actually um, naturally evolved and uh, looking at lionfish as a, as a prey. Yeah. But here, grouper and, and sharks, those are major top predators, right? Mm -hmm. They did not evolve with lionfish. So when they see a lionfish, though, they don't recognize it as a food. Oh. Okay. Oh. And, of course, Belize, very early on, took the initiative to decide that humans would be the predator of lionfish, that we would fish them out and we would eat them. Uh, to, in order to be able to reduce the population when it was first growing. Now, the biggest fear that people have is that it is venomous, venomous right? Yes. Uh, tell us how uh, the education process has been, especially when encouraging fishermen to attempt to catch the lionfish. Yes, of course. Actually, the misconception that people have is that lionfish is poisonous mm -hmm. as opposed to venomous. And it's actually venomous. And it's just 18 spines that Tyrell will later demonstrate which 18 spines and how to safely remove them that are venomous. The mm -hmm. meat itself is good meat. Yeah. So what we found through studies that we've done in northern Belize with fishermen is that they do know about lionfish. 
they do know how to handle lionfish. They do know how to cut it properly. Mm. Um, in other parts of the country, like here in Belize City, we actually conducted some outreach mm -hmm. in June of this year where we went to Conk Shell Bay and we spoke to fishermen and we tried to get a little sense of what they knew about lionfish mm -hmm. as well as try to demonstrate to them how to safely remove the spines of the lionfish. And we found that they are interested in learning more about lionfish and yeah. how to handle it. It's just that there are certain barriers towards getting there. Yeah. So one of the main barriers is the economic aspect, which is the marketing, the pricing, and the demand of lionfish, as well as the lack of equipment. Yes, because they're spared. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So they have to dive down and spear the lionfish yes. in mm -hmm. order to be able to get yes, it. Yes, yeah. exactly. So there's, depending on the community that you're at in the country, there's, in the fisher, in the fisher community, there's a high level of knowledge mm -hmm. towards lionfish, mm -hmm. or there's a medium, or there's very little education. Yeah. So we've we've of course based in Sartaneja mm -hmm. we've worked a lot with the fishing community along with um, the Sartaneja Fishermen Association we've, we've been working a lot to educate the fishermen and the local community about lionfish and how delicious it is and how tasty it is and that you know it's good for the environment it's good for the reef to eat it mm -hmm. yeah and we've also been doing these outreach events in for example lobster fest in Key Cocker yeah. in Placencia as well and at lionfish tournaments so we've done countrywide education but there's still more that we need to do yeah and i mean it has to taste good it's eating all of our favorite fish anyway yeah. it's eating the grouper the snapper <laughs> the parrot fish is there anything that is safe from the lionfish like safe from the lionfish well um like because they, they, they eat baby lobsters they eat the, the baby ones. parrot fish they eat the grouper the snapper I mean, they eat yeah. shrimp yeah, they eat almost anything that's going to yeah. actually fit within their mouth. And the funny thing is that land fish, uh, they can eat and eat and eat. Um, they can eat around approximately 30 individuals per minute. So they just constantly wow. eat, wow. eat and eat. So and they're like at the ultimate all-you-can-eat buffet and there's nobody there to charge them, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but in terms of, because, you know, it, it's so funny that these animals or these fish, they, they, they come, they eat 30 little fish per minute. Yeah, per minute. So, yes, in so. terms of their rep reproduction, though, because you know you have to be reproducing so that so they could have masses. What is the reproduction rate? Like? So that's really funny. That's that's one of the reasons why the population and just exceeds so drastically. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because they have a really fast reproductive um uh, time. You know, they usually reproduce every um four days. What? So and they produce like thirty to forty um yeah. eggs, right? So looking over on a year, that's almost more than two million eggs yeah. per year. And the thing is that uh, there's no natural predator that actually feeds on egg. You know, mm -hmm. some fish, um, the eggs they produce, other fish will prey on the eggs, right? But lionfish, there's no predation on the actual eggs. So um, that's why most of those fish exactly are reached to adulthood and yeah. increase the population. So given Sorry. the scenario that you've, you've, out, you've outlined, what has been our success in Belize so far in being able to maintain it? at the level that it is right now. I mean, we're still working to be able to lower it, mm -hmm. but we're not seeing the massive numbers that we see in other parts of the Caribbean. Well, one of the reasons why the, the population is quite, um, quite low, and I won't say that low enough. No, though, no, no we have more work to do. Yeah, there's more that, work yeah. actually needed, right? But um, I think this is really thanks to the fishermen. A lot of fishermen has been involved, mm -hmm. and also tour operators and not leaving out the other NGOs working in those marine protected mm -hmm. areas. Because yeah. one of the major problems we have here, um, well, throughout the Caribbean is that, um, you know, we have established marine protected areas. And these areas actually protect um, certain zone of the water, right? So, and fishermen don't have access to those areas. And what we have noticed is that uh, in these zone, what we call no-take zone, which include the conservation zone, the preservation zone, lionfish density is super high mm -hmm. compared to area where uh, fishermen have access and that mm -hmm. makes sense right because yeah. i mean fishermen can go in those areas and remove lionfish but in the no-take zone there's no one there's no effort except yeah. from certain um ngos that are actually working or tour operators removing lionfish mm -hmm. from those zones wow. so that's the a slight problem that we need to try to address yeah. and yeah. find a solution to reduce this now the key to having fishermen want to go out purchase a spear, take the time, go and dive, collect the lionfish, is to be able to sell it. You know, it has to be something that will give them a good financial return. And that means that 
the restaurants have to want it and the people in the restaurants have to want yeah. to eat That's it. Right. Yeah. So that is a part of your education process. And I want to ask how that has been going. Well, we've been conducting several interviews, um, surveys countrywide with restaurants, with consumers, with fishermen um, in the last more or less two years, since mm -hmm. 2015, 2016. So with the fishermen, as I was saying previously, the main barrier is finding a market, the pricing, and finding a demand, yeah. as well as equipment, lack of equipment. For the restaurants, it's the supply. Mm -hmm. So they are interested in serving lionfish and we actually have a very good number of, well, considerably good number of restaurants that do serve lionfish. For example, in San Pedro, in Kikaker, mm -hmm. in Placencia, even in Sartineja, there are a lot of restaurants that do serve lionfish. But there's always the lack of access of supply. And in regards to the consumers, people are interested in, in having lionfish. Mm -hmm. They do know about lionfish. A low percentage of people have actually tasted lionfish, mm -hmm. but a high percentage in that same number of people that we interviewed, countrywide again, they were interested in tasting lionfish. But their main concern was the misconception that they have regarding the actual meat of the lionfish yeah. as well as you know they people have grown up eating snapper grouper and they're like oh well if I can have a snapper and a grouper at my favorite restaurant mm -hmm. why don't I just have a snapper and a grouper I know how that tastes yeah. I know how nice that is I'll just have that instead of tasting something new new you know how yeah. humans are we stick to what we know and mm -hmm. it's very hard for us to try something new. Yeah. So, um, you know, we've seen that people, there is interest from the fishing community, there is interest from the restaurants, there mm -hmm. is interest from the, from the consumers. It's just trying to bring down those barriers yeah. that we need to work on. And we're actually working on that. You know, we're in a situation right now, uh, especially around these months with actually the, the, um, the barracuda. Uh, whereby some people have been getting sick by eating the barracuda. So we're at this point right now whereby lionfish is much more safer to eat than the barracuda. What do you think of this? Yeah, I mean, this is an opportunity, right? I mean, a lot of people tend to like, like the barracuda. Because right? this is what we've grown up eating. It's yeah, the exactly. same thing like the fish in the water that can't recognize that, you know what, this thing is good to eat. And this is the reason why there is a, you know, there, it's, you know, growth within the lionfish population so it's the same thing yeah exactly i mean um i think one of the reasons why people don't think that lionfish is more as a food is that first of all they don't have the access to it right i mean let's say i'm living like inland in a village inland how would i actually know or where to get lionfish so mm -hmm. i think um that would be one of the major barrier between um you know like coastal community compared to to an inland village so mm -hmm. yeah definitely um it's also a great marketing opportunity. If I think of tourist destinations to say, oh, we're, you know, you're in an eco-friendly environment, we're, we're an eco-tourism destination for many people, and you're eating a fish to help to save the reef. Yeah. I just, yeah. I can only yeah. imagine how it'd be such a great set. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, but you have actually put together an event that you're hoping will help to spread the message and especially for people who've never tried lionfish, yes. this is the chance. Yes, that's right. So. We, again, through many surveys that we've done, we've concluded that Belize City is, there's not much knowledge about lionfish. There's yes. not many restaurants that serve lionfish, except for Neri's restaurant that mm -hmm. I'm aware of. Um, so what we're trying to do is people from Belize City, thank you, mm -hmm. to have the opportunity to taste lionfish, to learn a little bit more about lionfish. So along with Neri's restaurant, we're hosting a lionfish dinner on mm -hmm. September 16th. It's the Neri's restaurant that's located on Douglas, Douglas Jones, Jones Street. Yeah. Okay. That's right. It's an invitation only event. Mm. Yes. So the invitation, the dinner will be three course meal, all lionfish. So starting with lionfish ceviche, lionfish serre, you know, which is our a very traditional Belizean, mm -hmm. well, both of them, This, I mean, ceviche, <laughs> come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ceviche, sere, and then we're going to go on with a coconut curry lionfish. Sweet. Yes, with, served with rice and beans. Nice. Rice and beans. So, um, yeah, 
we will be hosting this event along with Mary's Restaurant and it's we're gathering people from many different backgrounds, from the NGO community, the fishing community. We're trying to invite the media as well. And we also want, you know, your local Belizeans to have the opportunity to attend an event like this and to taste the lionfish, maybe, probably, for the very first time in their life. Yeah. So we have two tickets. Mm -hmm. um, each ticket is for two people, mm -hmm. right? So we're gonna give these away and we have questions for the tickets, which I've actually, I don't think we've mentioned the answers to the questions. Uh, before we get <laughs> before we get to uh, giving away these tickets, yes. where, where can we get tickets? I see it says there on the, the ticket, please RSVP by August 31. That was yesterday. Yes, that was yesterday. <laughs> yeah. So we're ho so since these are giveaways, mm -hmm. those people will, of course, Hopefully they do RSVP. Well, if they, if they participate, I, I'm, I'm assuming, assuming that they're, they're able to go. Yeah, exactly, of course. exactly. Of course. But as I said, it's invitation only. We did send an invitation to the channel, so yeah. we need we have to look out for who's gonna go, <laughs> <laughs> who's going to be representing. So um, this is your way of being able to have people in Belize City get their taste of life. Exactly. Fish. exactly. Um, so it's countering the issue that if they know what it tastes like they're confident that they like it, then they'll also be a part of the demand for the fish exactly. in the city. And they will tell their friends, I went to Neri's, I went to this lionfish dinner, the lionfish was amazing, you need to go, you need to go to your local yeah. restaurant, you need to go to your local fishermen, you know, ask for lionfish. And it's, it's encouraging, it's trying to encourage other restaurants in Belize City to also serve lionfish. So we've invited other restaurants as yeah. well to this event and you know it's just whether it be Neri's your local restaurant that you go and have lunch mm -hmm. or dinner or yeah. I don't know what other restaurant here in Belize City <laughs> but you go to your restaurant and you say do you have lionfish yeah. can I please have lionfish instead of snapper or grouper in my yeah. whatever type of fish you have you know <laughs> and so then the restaurants go out to the fishermen they request yes. more lionfish exactly. and then the fishermen go out and catch more of them exactly. and then we have less in our waters eating our reef fish. Yes. And, yes. and, and lion See, fish is tasty. this is how tasty. you play your part. Just yeah. eat yeah. fish. Just eat lion exactly. fish. Exactly. Just eat it, fish. It really is good. Yeah, it, it really, really is, is. Okay, so we actually have a demo. You know, I love ceviche, but that coconut curry fish. Oh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to that, but of course, that so is a part of the dinner that you can be uh, invited to. It's invitation only, which mm -hmm. means you can't buy your ticket from anyone. You must win it here on the show. It means four persons, because you said two persons per ticket. That's right. Four persons who will be able to benefit from this giveaway, right? Yes, that's right. Uh, do we have the questions yet? Yes, we do. So let me, let me see. Question number one is where can you purchase or get lionfish? Question number two is why should you eat lionfish? And question number three is how can you prepare lionfish? So answer all three questions on, on uh, Facebook. So yeah. usually how we do this is you can answer two of the three questions oh, okay. and once you get two correct, then you win a ticket. Mm -hmm. But three sounds pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's stick to two. It means you're paying attention. So those questions will be posted to mm -hmm. our Facebook and it means that you will uh, have to answer them on a post mm -hmm. and the first two winners get the tickets, right? Yeah. And of course, awesome. each ticket is for two, two persons. Two persons. Right. But we're going to uh, get a little sample as well this morning. We're going to be tasting some lionfish lion ceviche. Yes. And <laughs> you've actually, you, you mentioned that uh, you can be able to get lionfish here in Belize City at Neri's Restaurant, That's which right. is why you partnered with them. And so we have one of the cooks from Neri's here to showcase a recipe. And Tyrell, you're going to show us how to prepare it. Exactly. Okay, All right. well let's uh, start with that, right? So? We're gonna shift over. In the meantime, they're showing you some video of uh, the f people catching lionfish. Yeah, that's right, they're staring. All right. Things first. Oh, you have it there already. First thing first is actually preparing the lion for the food, right? Mm -hmm. So we recommend to have safety first, right? Yeah. Safety first, meaning that you wear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
So we have uh, with us on this side, before we move into that, because we want to make sure everybody sees the demo, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're good. We're back on air. Let's go. Tyra, let's see how you prepare. First things first. First thing first, we need to prepare the lionfish, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But remember, safety always comes first. Okay. So lionfish, we know that they have spines, like regular fish mm -hmm. do have spines. But there's an extra caution towards lionfish. Mm -hmm. They have venom in the spine. So mm -hmm. if you do get spined by a lionfish, you're going to get swell, your hand kind of get even um, a lot of pain you're going to receive. So one thing to, in case an incident happen that we get spine, mm -hmm. always have hot water. Uh -huh. Hot water always help to, to reduce the pain and the, um, the swelling of the, the actual spine of the okay. fish. Okay. So first thing, first thing is um, gloves. Safety first. Safety first, yeah, exactly. Uh, usually we tend to, rec we recommend to use a puncture proof glove, but in okay. my case, um, I've been handling lionfish quite couple of times so, so you should know how to do I should know right? professional yeah. exactly know. <laughs> let's hope there are no TV nerves to this all right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right so like I said right the land right. fish is like a typical outer fish I mean it's so easy to uh, handle but just a little mm -hmm. extra caution yeah. so the first thing is to, to first if you want to handle the land fish the safest part right now since the fish has the entire spine is the, the mouth or the head of the land fish so you can okay. describe it here lift it up so like um, we previously said, the lionfish have 18 spines. So 18 of those venomous spines are located on the dorsal fin, so it's this upper part. Okay. So if we can see, these are the actual spines. So there are 13 up here. 13 mm -hmm. up? 13, yeah. Dorsal fin. Dorsal and fin, yeah, on the dorsal fin. So these are the spines, so there's 13. So we need to actually remove these 13 in order to reduce mm -hmm. the risk, right? But hey, that's just 13, so where the rest is? So on each pelvic fin, we have one spine, so oh. we can see one here. Mm -hmm. So that's one, that's make 14. Then the other one is on the other pelvic fin, right over here. 15. So that's 15, so three more remains. Mm -hmm. Where could that be? Tail? On the, on, on oh yeah, almost to the tail. So it's actually located on the anal um, fin, so right <coughs> here, right here, sorry. And then we have three right here, see? One, two, three. One, two, oh, three. Yes. So these are the spine of danger. Okay. <laughs> we need to remove them. So, we can have a simple scissors, use a scissors, and just cut it off. It's just the tips that are dangerous, Yeah, just right? the tips. So, yeah. actually, the venom tends to be located on the spine. So, here, what actually happens when you get spined by the lionfish, mm -hmm. the, the flesh goes down, casting up to push out the, the little um, spine, and then oh. the venom just goes Whoa. injected into the, oh, into the bone. Okay. So, once removing the spine, the fish is safe to handle. So it's, it's Best to be very careful when you're handling the lionfish. Exactly. So, but he's a tasty one. But Tyrell, you've mentioned that the go ahead and continue. Right, sure. But you've mentioned that the fishermen pretty much have mastered this this yeah. technique. They don't have the fear they once had before. Yeah, definitely. I mean, some fishermen don't even cut, cut off the spine. They just still eat like this. And that's yeah. they're so good at it, right? So. Oh yeah. Yeah. But uh, we encourage the fishermen to, you know, the safety. Safety, yeah. safety first, first yeah. as usual. And it's, it's pretty funny because some fishermen can actually get spined by lionfish and they don't have no reaction to so it. So are you saying that they, they get, they get uh, immune to it? Something like that, yeah. Wow. I mean, yeah. yeah. So it's I'm literally just cutting it off. That's just all cutting you have it off, do. yeah. So you cut off the, the two that is located on the pelvic fin. So that's yeah. one and the other one is here. Then remember there's three more on the anal. So we cut the anal fin. There we go. And that should be a. So and these you hold fins. It from the mouth? Yeah. So now you can actually hold it anywhere. You already removed the spine that has the the venom. This uh, the pectoral fin doesn't have any spine on it, so it's really safe. But okay. you can cut so it off. So one had and one didn't have. No. So what exactly was the pelvic fin? So the yeah. pelvic fin is located on the um, on the belly. Oh, yeah. on, on the, the belly. belly. Yeah, on the belly. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's two of them. The chest of it. They are okay. The chest. Yeah. Yes. We call it the pelvic fin. So that's two. And this it is this two here that we have here. Then the anal and the dorsal fin that has the long spine. And that's it. And that's it. So easy. It's not a very scaly fish, is it? It does have scale, but the scale is quite uh, reduced. So, uh -huh. um, but it does have. So, I mean, some people tend to scrape it off uh, if you want to sell it whole or cook it. Just like that, you Just can like you this. can get your fish and cook it as you would regularly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. Okay. All right. Then this goes into whatever is being prepared. I'm where the food is. If you didn't know, <laughs> this, right? So we're joined. Of course, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself. I'm Olivia Viamil. Okay. okay. And Olivia, you are one of the cooks at Neri's restaurant in yes, Belize uh, City. Yes. So today you're going to be showing us how to make lionfish ceviche. Okay. okay. You seem like a bit of an expert on this, so let's see what you've got. <laughs> First, I have the lionfish fish that uh -huh. is diced up. We blanch it 
like 10 to 15 seconds mm -hmm. in hot water. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use this first. Okay. Now, Cecilia, tell us about your experience of using lionfish in the kitchen at Neri's. When they first came in and said, oh, we're going to use lionfish, were you uh, a bit worried? Yes, because we're afraid of that. The venom. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and then? <laughs> but when we tried it, it was good. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So good. when the cook approves that it tastes good, you know. You don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So we die, so we, we, we soak it in uh, warm water, hot water for about 15 seconds. Second. Blanch it. Yeah, yeah. Blanch it. Blanch it. Yes, sir. Then? Mm -hmm. Then you use lime. Lime juice. Lime juice. juice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh. All right. And we use the... All of these are diced up. Cilantro. What do we have diced up there? Cilantro. This is how I like to cook. Why can't I get my onions chopped up like this already? Do you have to bite the nerves? <laughs> <laughs> then I don't have to cry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So oh, cilantro. Yeah. Cilantro. Oh. <laughs> That's onions. I think I'm going to cry yeah. a bit on set right now. <laughs> onions. All or? Onions. Oh, uh -huh, yes, ma'am. Oh. Mm -hmm. Woohoo. Yeah. <laughs> Tomatoes. All right. That's some serious aroma. I'm feeling sad this morning. <laughs> John, you can get it all right now. <laughs> tomatoes. Okay, tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Freshly chopped as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cucumber. Right. Yum. Cucumber. Okay. This is habanero pepper. Yes. Habanero. Mm -hmm. I'll let you Ooh. do it so that you can. To my taste, taste. who's this? <laughs> if it's my taste, I might drop the whole thing in. All right, is All right. that enough? Uh -huh. This is ginger habanero from that we made ourselves. Uh -huh. Ginger habanero. habanero. Ooh. So you thought you were just getting a lionfish ceviche. This is a special ceviche. A little bit of black pepper and, and salt. salt. All right. So. The other day I was making eggs for the staff and I had a problem. I put too much salt, so please tell me when to stop. <laughs> All right. A little more, a little more. Yes. Uh -huh. All, right. All right, and then pepper. A little more. Yes. All right. All right. <laughs> Doing it to so it, Lion Fish Ceviche. Habanero. Nero. Yes. Oh, smell that. Ah, that smells so good. Mm -hmm. You notice she didn't tell us the secret. She yeah, brought that ready. Did. So you can only get that at Neri's. Oh, mm -hmm. That smells so good. It smells good. So is this something you can get off the menu there, or this is special yes. for the event? No, this you can get it off the menu mm -hmm. every day at Neri's. Yes, sir. And the coconut curry. Oh. To mm. Wow. Lionfish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the coconut curry is mm -hmm. good. You know, one of the things that we always do as well is to dare, dare people on what to eat. Like, I bet you can't eat, or I, yeah, yeah. This is yeah, definitely a good time to taste the lionfish, and I'm sure you're going to get hooked on it. It's a very tasty fish. The only thing about it, though, that people are afraid of is the fact that they hear the word venom. Venom, yeah. yeah. That doesn't mean that it's not good to eat. Lionfish is completely safe to eat. Well, the key thing is if you're going to buy it from your fisherman, you don't even have to worry. You could get it filleted, yeah. you can get it uh, already with the spine cut mm -hmm. off, so that makes it easier. All right, and there you have it, easy as that. So, tell me, you are a cook, you, you're probably very choosy about the kind of fish that you use. As somebody who prepares different meals, what do you like about cooking lionfish? Well, lionfish, when you know, every at most restaurants you have the, the like fillet, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's fillet snapper. Mm -hmm. But the lionfish is more smoother than the um, fillet snapper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and very soft. Very soft. Yes, is it flaky when you when you eat it? No, ma'am. No. no. Mm -hmm. Fish. Mm. This, this, this is definitely one. Mm -hmm. This is one to recommend. This, this is, is a meaty one. This is a very good one. Very meaty one. Ooh. And that very means tasty. it's time to try. The okay. lionfish. All right. So I have no fear because I've had lionfish before. I can't say go. that much. <laughs> but I understand that people think it's not good. And I love my ceviche too. 
John, why are you pretending like you're not greedy? <laughs> oh. Sorry, while you're over there. Ladies first. Right. Ladies first. That's yeah. right. That's right, Tyrell. I have that problem where I always overstuff my corn chip. Yeah, All right, <laughs> so let's attack. Mm. Let me be the judge of it. All right. Attack. Mm. Uh, I could hear the crunch going on, Marlene. I could hear it going on. This is delicious. Absolutely delicious. Mm. Three, two. Mm. Is the habanero okay? The habanero is good. I got a little piece, so that's that makes me happy. And I taste a little bit of ginger in it. Mm -hmm. That is such a great ceviche. I have to tell you that this is one of the dishes you can be able to get at the uh, dinner, mm -hmm. September 16th. What time is the dinner? It's seven. at seven. It's at seven, seven. till seven. Nine. 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 Invitation only. So here's what's happening. We had three questions earlier that were asked. Mm -hmm. Remind me again, Cecilia, the first one was where you can get it. Okay, where you can get it, why you should eat it, and how do you prepare it? Those are the three questions that you need to answer on the Open Your Eyes Facebook page. Uh, go to facebook.com slash open your eyes BZ, post it on our page, and the two right, the first two persons who answer two of the three questions right. Mm -hmm. We're going for three for three because we know we have a smart audience. The first two people receive invitations, and that invitation allows you to have a free dinner. Did we say that? A free dinner at Neri's, complete with a three-course meal um, for you and another person. So you don't want to miss it. And this lionfish was worth uh, jumping online right mm -hmm. now and getting those answers in, right? Fantastic job, Olivia. Thank you um, so, so much. I just want to add, too, that um, our work has been successful due to um, collaboration work with other um, partners, right? Like mm -hmm. the fishers department. So we'll give thanks to the fishers department. Um, Others like the the Colorado University um, uh, works we work along also, mm -hmm. and also I want to uh, give thanks to our sponsors. Um, we have Marfan, uh, the Submit Foundation, and New England BioLab Foundation. Thanks to them, our work has been successful. Well, thank you for coming in as well, and we wish you the best of luck. Of course, we want to remind everybody: if you want to do your part in saving the reef, eat the lionfish. Eat the lion. Eat yeah, the eat, lion. Eat the yeah. lion. I like the shirt, but just before just before we go. For, for people who always have that misconception of uh, uh, fish ceviche, fish ceviche not taste at the center fish. Yeah, exactly. No, <laughs> the, the, the no it doesn't. Good. It doesn't. It, does it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> and I am like faithful to my conch ceviche. This See? doesn't taste fishy at all. So uh, definitely something you want to try. Remember, you can have an opportunity to be a part of that dinner on September 16th. 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., but you got to send in those answers on Facebook. We'll That's look right. out for it, and you'll see who the winner is later on. Thank you so much for coming in, for preparing the ceviche. I noticed you hold on to a couple secrets, but that's good. That means people have to go there and say, I want Olivia's lionfish ceviche, Woo. right? And Tyrell, Cecilia, thank you so much for coming in as well. Pleasure. Right? We got to go ahead and take a break, and when we come back, we are going to be joined by... We'll be joined by Neil Hall, who is, of course, the uh, communication, ma communication and marketing com uh, marketing director at Niche. They'll be here with us. He'll be here with us. We're talking about mm -hmm. the national song competition winner and the carnival song competition winner. They're going to be here with us. Uh, we're going to get celebration started after the break. All right.